What's up, tricksters, and welcome to another episode of Omen 2 Immortal series, a series where I'm teaching you my best radiant tips, tricks, and strategies for Omen. Last episode, we got a bit stuck in ranked elo hell with egoistic diamond and ascendant players, but in this episode, you'll see why Omen is the S tier solo queue agent to escape any rank in Valorant. If you have any questions about Omen, feel free to ask me down in the comments, or you can join my Discord for private professional coaching. And other than that, let's hop into our first game and showcase you some big brain Omen setups and outplays. When you're playing Split, one of the main mistakes that players make is being way too passive on defender's side. But even if you're playing someone like Omen, you want to play semi-aggressive playstyle. For an example, you can abuse the dead zone mechanic in A main or B main area of this map, which can grant you a lot of free kills. <laughs> I'm so good at this. Spike down. After getting that kill and making numbers advantage, my brain dead teammates decided that it was a good idea to fully aggress enemies on mid in an anti eco round, when we could have just played passively together with the guns and numbers advantage that I just created. Sometimes it is okay to hunt the kills when you want to damage the enemy's economy, but if yours overall team economy is not good enough or stable, it's much better to play smart. Never go for some pointless solo kills, don't give free guns to enemies, focus on preserving your overall team economy and close out easily these anti-eco rounds, baby. Once we were left in this 3v1 scenario, I instantly said to my teammates to play passive and together, but my jet once again completely ignored my callout and gave enemy sage a free kill and ultimate to revive the killjoy. This is one of many reasons why I always teach my private students to value their own life over the life of their teammates. That doesn't mean that you should be baiting and selling your teammates 24-7, but you need to become a disciplined player that understands how to control the outcome of every round, especially when you have a team that is filled with autopilot aggressive gorillas. No autopilot. Now, we still won this round, but we lost over 1100 credits that can hurt our economy a lot in the future, and it was not an easy round. Remember this pro tip for rank solo queue, my friends. If you're not alive to control the outcome of your rounds, you're simply gambling and you can play smarter. Players always assume that these plays you can only perform with jet or chamber, but reality is that if you have an operator or some one-tap weapon and your mechanical skill is good enough, this is an easy kill with any agent. No, 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 you don't do that. For an example, with Vandal or Phantom, all you need to do is go for a fast jiggle pick, perform a burst fire at the moment of time when you release your D key, press your A key to go back and make sure that both you and your crosshair placement are ready to engage enemies. This is why mastering movement and understanding some in-depth Valorant mechanics is extremely important for your improvement as a player. And all of these guides, routines and trainings for these mechanics I'm sharing in my private coaching programs on my Discord server, but also on my Discord you can access the Omen Ranked Playbook with all of my strategies and tactics for every single map for Valorant solo queue, baby! Now, in this round my teammates once again sold a numbers advantage by being undisciplined and we were left in a 3v2 situation. RKO, which was the A player, got killed on mid by the remaining two enemies, and I knew that they are going to go A after that kill, so I used my ultimate towards the A site, but then I remember that I have only operator with a shorty, and that my cypher is not really the best player to ever touch this game, so I cancelled my ultimate in order to play a proper 2v2 retake. Was this a wasted ultimate, charlatan? Maybe, but in the same time, this ultimate will put enormous amount of mental pressure onto enemies, and they might not expect me and Cypher playing together. Now, this Cypher's ultimate also gave us some huge information. Based on this ultimate, I knew that enemy Killjoy is planting the spike for a tower, and based on Reyna's position, I had a feeling that she is gonna try to reposition on ramp. So I smoked for Cypher to so cross safely, and I picked Reyna before she can even come into the smoke. Enemy remaining. And after that, it was just an easy 2v1 refrag game. Last player standing. Thank you. Bro! Remember, my friends, always prioritize team play and pay attention on your minimap. Now, in this round on attacker side, our push got delayed and I was waiting for a perfect moment of time to engage enemies. My ultimate is ready. Oh, 
Remember, my friends, that picking a proper timing for your omen outplays is 90% of your success potential. You should run. If you're stuck on the bomb site and you have ultimate, you can dodge Kildress ult if you teleport at around 2 seconds before the lockdown detonates, and then simply cancel your ult to surprise enemies that are pushing into the site. Off your feet! Bro, he's so stupid. Now, this is one of my signature and the most favorite aggressive omen executes on B-side of Split. You place the first one-way smoke on top of this box to block the vision of enemies on rafters. Then you place the second lethal smoke for B tower. You flash the backside or the site for your teammates and then teleport inside of this one-way. From this position, you can perform around six different outplays and use your second teleport on all of these positions to surprise enemies. Blinding. Can't go there. Two city, two city. One tower ci and city. Tower? Here I've used this smoke to isolate enemy Reyna into a 1 vs 1 gunfight and to take an easy surprise kill with Shorty. And then I went into CT spamming my smoke to distract enemy Killjoy so that my jet has easier time killing her. Remember my friends, if you can simplify your gunfights without relying on your raw mechanical skill, just do it! Now on Fracture, Brimstone is definitely a far better controller than Omen, but in lobbies below Immortal 1, you can still hard carry and perform some crazy outplays with this agent. In this specific retake, I've used my smoke in the choke point to isolate enemy Sage that is alone on the bomb site, but I misplaced my smoke that should have been much deeper towards A main. Shadows traveling. Fortunately enough, I was able to refrag my Reyna and turn this round into a 2v1, which my Sage immediately overturned into 1v1, instead of waiting for me to tap the spike and distract enemy Brimstone. Now in this situation, this round should not be losable for the attacking team. It's a 1v1, enemy has the spike planted for him in aiming, and I have only a classic pistol. He can just jump spot me, jiggle peek me, distract me, and win this round by wasting my time until the spike detonates. But instead of that, he went for a pointless wide peak, probably thinking that I don't have time to defuse the spike. Now, why did the Brimstone lose this round? Disregarding his undisciplined and brain dead swing, you need to pay attention on the sound cues of Spike. First of all, Spike makes two absolutely different sounds when it's not defused at all. And when it's half defused. But also, ticking sound of the spike can tell you how much time enemies have left to defuse it. When the sound of spike goes from this... ...to this... ...it means that there's around 20 seconds left to defuse it. When the sound of spike goes from this... ...to this... ...it means that there's around 10 seconds left. And when the sound changes to the supersonic fast, like this... ...it means that there's 5 seconds left. Also, with the sound changes, there's a visual indicator on the spike that can tell you exactly the timings when the spike is gonna detonate. Since in this example, spike is half defused, I need only around 3.5 seconds to defuse it. So that means that enemy Brimstone should have waited just 1.5 second before his wide swing. In these clutch situations, you need to use your brain to full capacity, because rounds like these, especially the first round, can often decide the outcome of the whole match. Now, once again, Operator is not an exclusive gun to Duelist or Chamber, and you need to master using this weapon regardless of the agent that you're playing, because it's literally a free elo stick and you can easily punish enemies' mistakes on both attack and defense. Cover going out. That's it. Spike planted. 
One enemy remaining. The wall, the wall. Nice. That's why you carry the shorty with yourself. That's why you carry the shorty. I don't want to see any one of you guys without the shorty, bros. Anyone? You always carry the shorty as a secondary weapon. Always, always, always. Okay, gorillas. In my future videos and guides, I'll be sharing with you some big brain tips and tricks to master operator. So make sure to subscribe on my YouTube channel, leave a like and follow me on Twitch for some daily live streams and solo queue shenanigans. Now, in this post plant on A site of Fracture, avoid overstacking the bomb site because enemies can easily F you up with their utility. It's always better to spread a bit on the map, take the aim and control if Spike is already planted for it, but obviously you should play on refresh potential, which my teammates didn't really do well in this scenario. Notice how much I'm focused on minimap, waiting for my smoke to recharge and picking a right moment of time to peek on the contact of my breach. You will not kill my ally. Silence. Flash out. Sorry, sorry. One enemy remaining. No worries, my friends. Papushka is here to compensate for your mistakes. Cover going out. Right there. That's one enemy remaining. Nice. Boys. Three days we spent in diamond. Yes, sir. Now, in our next game, I didn't do anything special when it comes to my outplays. I've just repeated all of my strategies and tactics for Split that I've already covered in previous episodes of this series. So make sure to watch every video from beginning to the end if you don't want to miss some important information for your solo queue grind, my dear tricksters. This round is the prime example why you should never hunt the frags in Valorant and give an opportunity for enemies to come back. In this eco round, I'm left in a 2v5 scenario with Rays, Shorty and Light Shield. Enemies have full control of the spike and our chances of winning this round are extremely low. But remember, my friends, every round is winnable and you should never give up. He got a Becky. Was B main. Thirty seconds left. Okay. Shorty life shield. Shorty life shield, baby. <laughs> I apologize, my friends, but I have the competitive spirit of a gorilla. Also, some of these enemies are literally immortals, and it feels like I'm playing in iron. Now it is time for Papushka Babushka play on Seaside of Lotus, and I've already explained it in the previous episodes of this series. Last player standing. One enemy remaining. Here I gambled that enemy Reyna is either flank or CT, and I wanted to go all the way onto the A site, pick up the spike with my ultimate, which will allow me to have better preparation for the post plant. But my gamble was incorrect. Better luck next time, charlatan! Okay, who's got the Digi boys. Bro, today I'm feeling my omen, man. The next game on Haven was a pure team diff, and enemies were not even trying to win. This is the classic mentality of ranked solo queue players, which why majority of Ascendants and Immortals will never touch Radiant. You need to remember that Valorant is more of a mental game than anything else, and having a proper communication, mentality and attitude will impact the outcome of your games quite a lot. Now, after these 5 wins and 26 matches from unranked, we've already got into Ascendant 1, baby! And we're only 2 wins and 2 ranks away from completing this series. But there's still plenty of Radiant tips, tricks and strategies that I need to teach you on Omen. Thank you for the support and I'll see you, my dear tricksters, in the next one.